Welcome to the Fundamentals of Surveying Q&A Review, and I cannot believe I'm saying this. This is my first question of 2020. I don't know how the time flies by. It really is a colloquialism, but it, it's true. I can't believe it's already 2020. So here we go. We're in the second decade of the 21st century, and we're starting off with a question that Gosh, I could almost guarantee this is going to be on the FS exam. They love these things. So let's play a little game. During a boundary retracement in the woods, you come across a not-so-healthy tree. Your boss tells you, write a report about it. Now, the tree is already cross-sectioned because it had a clean break. You've got to tell your boss one fact about each piece of the cross-section. Remember that. All right, so you come to this, you've gotten a clean break. This break is not quite so clean, but I, th I think you can see the cross section in this guy. God, what a crappy house. Anyways, we've got this tree, you walk up to it, and you touch it, and you feel it, and you taste it. No, you shouldn't taste it. You look at it, and you see it. Let's begin with discussing the cross section. So you walk up, you look at it, you touch it, you see it, all that good stuff. Let's start from the, I don't know, let's go from the outside in. We've got our outside bark, outer bark. We have our inner bark, cambium, pith, and the tree rings. So outer bark, inner bark, cambium, pith, and rings. Don't worry too much about these rays. I don't really see that very often. But let's go through and let's walk through each little uh, cross section and let's talk about them because this is a favorite question of the FS examiners. The most outside part is the dead bark or the outer bark. Now, this is a layer of dead tissue that is really, really tough. It's strong and it's got to be tough or strong because this is really the protective shell that surrounds a tree. And it also kind of insulates. So it insulates for a colder heat. It reduces the water loss by creating this barrier. And the dead bark is what people typically associate with different types of trees. Now, I'm going to admit, and my grandfather is going to be very disappointed in me, if you put a gun to my head, I probably couldn't tell you out in the wild the difference between like a swamp oak and a white oak. But what I do look for is kind of the, the depth and the pattern of the outside bark. Now, where I live, there's lots of white birch. And white birch is really easy to tell because the bark is, there's really no layer of bark. It's just, you know, really flat. There's no humps or grooves. And it looks scarred horizontally. Now, compare that from a hickory to a white oak. Hickory, you've got uh, kind, of a, a, kind of a rough outside layer, but the white oak just looks super thick. There's lots of bumps. But don't worry about telling the difference between an oak and a birch. What I want to tell you here is that the dead bark or the outer bark is a dead layer of tissue that protects the tree. Some trees shed their bark each year, while others don't. Next, we've got the inner bark. The inner bark is a layer of living tissue. And if you carve out this cross section, I love this picture, you've got a thick outer bark, you've got a thinner inner bark, and then you have a really kind of like a sheet called the cambium. The inner bark is what's really growing. And the food materials produced by the leaves are coming into the inner bark and that's what's growing. So the inner bark is really kind of the, the nutrient system of the tree. This is a, a living tissue, and the inner bark is growing. And at a certain time of year, the inner bark is going to die. That's very sad. But the inner bark becomes the outer bark. Third, the cambium. This is where we get into some really tough questions because you know what bark is. I mean, you're, you got some common sense. But if the, if the FS examiners say, what is the cambium 
of the tree. Gosh, I would have had no, ni- no idea what that meant last month. The cambium is a thin layer of cells that is inside of the live bark. So the cambium grows wood cells on the inside and live bark cells on the outside. So the cambium is like the membrane between the bark and the other parts of the tree. And what's really going to freak you out is that these hippies like to eat it. They go foraging, they cut the tree down, or they take a piece out of it, and they eat the cambium. Now that is really more of a factoid than a good FS question. But remember, outer bark, inner bark, and a thin layer of cells called the cambium. Once we get past this thin layer of cambium, now we get into the tree proper. And I call this the tree proper because we finally made it past the outside of the tree and we get to look at the big cross section. In this picture, we've got two distinct parts, a very light wood called the sapwood and then a dark wood called the hardwood. I just purchased some really beautiful hardwood floors Holy mackerel, those things were expensive. But the rigidity, the strength, they tell me it's going to last for a lifetime. I'm cynical. But the hardwood is the inside. And now I call this the heartwood or the hardwood, whichever one is fine. So if you see heart or hard, it doesn't matter. But the proper is heart, and I call it hard. So the sapwood is on the outside, that's the light color. And this is kind of flexible. It's new, it's flexible, it's light. But further in, we've got the heartwood. And the heartwood is formed by a blockage of channels of food materials, and the heartwood is tougher, more durable than the sapwood. Know those two for sure. Sapwood, heartwood. And finally, after five minutes of talking about parts of a tree, we have made it to the center. And at the center of the tree is this soft, pulpy zone. It's only about one centimeter in diameter. Wow, that's narrow. And the pith is also called the medulla. And guess what? You have a medulla in your brain, which is small and soft as well. So the pith or the medulla is going to be the center of the tree. I can't tell you enough, guys. Memorize this diagram cold because this is going to be a question on the FS exam. Outer bark, inner bark, cambium, sapwood, hardwood, pith. Outer bark, inner bark, cambium, sapwood, hardwood, pith. Make that a song and don't forget it. The last thing we'll talk about today is the rings of a tree. Every tree has rings. The inner rings are the oldest, and the outer rings are the newest. A tree grows very fast when it's young. Therefore, the outer rings are wide, but the tree grows slower as it gets older. Therefore, the inner rings are more narrow. And once you've got that down, we can come to our four answer choices. Finally, let's do it. The cambium is located at the center of the tree. Total BS. The pith is at the center of the tree. Next, the sapwood is harder than the heartwood. Total BS. The sapwood is softer than the hardwood. And I, I'm going to make your brain connect heartwood with hardwood because they are the exact same thing. Fourth, the primary purpose of the inner bark is to protect. BS, the primary purpose of the outer bark is to protect. The inner bark is really kind of the the skin of the tree which grows and forms the outer bark. So the only thing left over is the pith is about one centimeter in diameter. If you knew nothing about the cross-section of a tree, this question would be impossible because a lot of the times you have to mix and match the terms with the cross-section picture. And if you miss one of those 
matching problems, they will give you zero points. So I want you guys to be like judo masters and tell me right off the bat, it's C. The pith is about one centimeter in diameter. 